Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, Earth weather, a peek at the X-ray side of the universe, and solar physicists learn an electric lesson the hard way. We begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star. Lots of features, but not much in the way of eruptive activity. Another dark coronal hole reaching for the equator, coming into center disk position. We have seen the tiniest blips on the radar of the solar flare charts. This is due to the appearance of sunspots where there were none before, but the flaring is about as unthreatening as the sunspot situation. Not much happening yet. Solar wind? Certainly presenting a coronal hole stream. The speed finally did shoot up yesterday, but it has failed to produce more than a bit of geomagnetic instability. Our best chance for actual storm conditions would be if that CME that came off the Earth-facing side a few days ago actually arrives at Earth tonight, it would present a minor consecutive impact scenario. After that, it'll be about three more days until another stream arrives from that coronal hole facing us now. Until it hits, and given the lack of magnetic storms from the previous one, the earthquakes had an opening. A 6.2 struck near a sparsely populated island in Papua New Guinea. Mostly just an unpleasant way to wake up for anyone who might have been there. Let's take a look at the X-ray universe. This is every X-ray point in the all-sky detector field. Red is low energy, blue is high energy, with size denoting brightness or proximity of the event. The central line is quite obviously from the Milky Way galaxy and the highly active center and galactic plane. But what about the density lobes top left and bottom right of the central activity? And how about their apparently being part of a larger circle, or perhaps even circles around it? And then you start to take a closer look and you realize that something is very, very off. Beyond the density lobes, which may have a galactic explanation, the lines do not. Just take a look at some of the blank areas compared to the readings that are set up in a line. It is one question to ask why there is such a non-homogeneity to the distribution that creates those large gaps, and it is a completely different question when we start looking at stars forming on a string, equidistant apart from one another, and galaxies that do the same. Strings that persist for kiloparsecs across intergalactic space. Folks, there is math, theory, modeling, and then there is seeing it with your own eyes. A quick note on some research out of New Hampshire. They were modeling solar wind and discovered that what they expected was not at all the reality. They assumed a kinetic model of diffuse, collisionless gases. Three things wrong there, and indeed ended up favoring a magnetohydrodynamic fluid plasma model. It's not gas, it's plasma. Transverse waves and differing plasma speed create tons of collisions, and it all happens inside the heliospheric magnetic field. No story here, just thought this was funny. I blame cow farts. Anyway, we've got severe weather coming to the United States along with that snowstorm. Later hours of the day, we'll see the convergence drop into Texas and rage in the breadbasket all night. Check local warnings there. Our other top weather worry comes right back to New Zealand. That system will be soaking the islands if it hasn't started doing so already. Dozens of you have already registered for Observing the Frontier 2018. Everyone who registers early has a chance to win free hotel lodging for the conference or other giveaways. And all the information can be found at observatoryproject.com and we're aiming to get a deeper look out this week at suspiciousobservers.org. Gonna dig deeper into the future climate risk maps. Right now we've got the rest of the world's weather followed by shots of our star to close. It's 5.15 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe everyone.